Guys, there are a few projects I've done here on my channel that have taken a bit longer than others. And so today I am coming back to a project that I started years ago, something that I get requests for all the time. Paul, please do a little bit more work on this project. You've promised us so much. So today that's, that's finally what I'm doing. And um, the project I'm gonna be working on is Hotbox, my wife's computer. And I don't know why you guys would have thought differently. Excellent. That's right guys, it's Hotbox, or Hotbox 2.0. I did a couple variations on this and it was originally built three years ago back in 2016. I first assembled it in May 2016 with some uh, clear coolant with some orange coloring. And then I re-attacked re it again in September. So that's just under three years old. And at that point I put in this opaque coolant, uh, which is Mayhem's coolant, which has changed just a little bit in color over time. Now I wanna point out that this is yet another example of me doing a water cool build that I have completely neglected and mistreated after the system was first put together. That's not without reason though, because the system has been working just fine. Like my wife has been playing Overwatch on it as of this week and stuff. But liquid cooling loops should be maintained. They should be flushed regularly every six months, if not every year. And you might end up with some discoloration over time with certain opaque coolants in particular. And again, you're just, you're not supposed to run it this long without doing any maintenance. So what I'm gonna be doing today it's flushing this loop out, removing probably most of the water cooling components that are in here, reconfiguring the system so it can get back up and running because this is still a system that my wife uses and still has stuff on it that she needs to take off of it. And hopefully it will be a lesson in uh, why you should clear out coolant like this, uh, but maybe also a bit of a solving of a mystery because I am curious as to the performance of the system right now when it comes to thermals and the performance once I swap some of these parts out uh, to get us back to something that's a little bit more serviceable. But what is the system running on? Uh, that's a good question. It's actually still a very powerful, very adequate system. We have a 6700K for the processor, which is a quad core with hyper threading. And it's all cooled by this EK uh, open loop setup that I've got with all EK components, including the Supremacy Evo water block, as well as the block that they have here for the GPU. The GPU, by the way, is a 980 Ti from Gigabyte. The motherboard at the back there is the Asus Z170i Pro Gaming motherboard. And this was back in the Z170 era when many ITX motherboards boards were a little bit more limited. I actually modified this one, removed some of the labeling and the other stuff on there that I felt was standing out and didn't match as well, so it would line up with the rest of the system and the orange and black color scheme. This is all assembled in the Fractal Design Define Nano S, uh, which is still, again, very nice little mini ITX uh, case. I'd say the only thing it doesn't have that's become more popular in the past couple years is it's got a plexiglass side panel window rather than tempered glass. And then we've got some parts from Kingston in the HyperX Fury memory there. That's a 32 gig kit, as well as a HyperX Predator 480 gig M.2 SSD and the HyperX Savage 960 gig uh, 2.5 inch SSD, which I believe is installed in the back. Lastly, we've got a Silverstone Strider 750 watt 80 plus platinum rated power supply. And we have a custom set of sleeved cable extensions from Insourced. Uh, that he, I believe this was the first system that I worked with him on. Uh, and these, these are still real nice. So we are, we are definitely keeping those cables. And I guess the only other thing I didn't mention is that it did have an NZXT Hue uh, with some RGB lighting in there originally, although that failed. Actually, this unit here specifically failed. I tested it and the LEDs still work fine. This hasn't been replaced, so I gotta figure out some other better solution for the lighting as well in here. Uh, but that said, let's first get a quick temperature test and see what temps we're getting right now when under load. Current CPU temperatures are in the low 70s, peaking at about 77, 76 to 77, as you can see in this column right over here. In order to test this, I've been running Blender for just over 10 minutes, as well as Unigen Valley, which is also going there to get a CPU and GPU test. We managed to peak at about 77 degrees on the CPU. It was getting warmer and warmer over time though. Initially we were in the 60s, it crept up and got into the 70s. 77 was the peak. If I was doing this legitimately, I'd run it longer for probably an hour or a half an hour at least to get the system fully thermally saturated. But really, I just wanted a point of comparison for when we uh, move on and swap some parts out. Meanwhile, the GPU was initially sitting pretty at about 51 degrees Celsius, but since it's on the same loop with the CPU, it was getting warmer and warmer over time as well, eventually maxing at 59 degrees. It's currently running at 58 degrees Celsius. So kind of interesting to get some initial numbers for this system, and it also kind of reinforces uh, the decisions I've made in the past, because this isn't the first time I've gone to and thought, I, I need to do 
something about the system. It's been going with this fluid for way too long. It needs some maintenance. But then I've looked at the temperatures and been like, well, it seems to be doing fine. Let's uh, hold off on that till later. It still seems to be doing okay. Although I do believe that if I was to run long-term stress tests on this, it would be getting too warm for comfort. And of course, uh, you're really not supposed to leave this type of coolant in here this long. If there's any indication of that, you might notice the color it is right now compared to maybe the color it was in my initial sexy B-roll shots. Or believe it or not, I actually still have the rest of the coolant uh, from when I initially put this together when Jay stopped by and I summoned him with the NVIDIA graphics cards and everything. He helped me out with the uh, second part of this build. It's still here. And you can tell this coolant that hasn't been used and heated over and over again and passing through a loop for a few years uh, is a little bit differently colored than the coolant that's in there. The other thing about this coolant is you're not supposed to just dump it down the drain or something. I believe it has heavy metals in it or something along those lines. So I'm going to attempt to drain this. I'm going to collect it in this uh, old coolant fluid bottle that I have and uh, try to dispose of it properly as you would motor oil or something like that. Fortunately, I did install a drain valve on this system when I first put it together. Well, all right, guys, uh, things are moving along here. Uh, it's pretty chaotic, and actually disassembling this loop was fairly challenging just because it's a mini ITX system. I did have that fill port I put at the top, which I was trying to use as a drain port by rotating the system all around and everything. Long story short, did a decent amount of spilling here. Uh, Joe was really on point with grabbing rags and stuff so we could wipe that up before it got too out of control. And fortunately, none of the core hardware uh, was got any liquid on it at all. So I've removed the uh, motherboard and the processor with the memory installed and still got the SSD on the back and everything. The graphics card is also out and you can actually see some of the fluid still in there. I went ahead and capped it um, so that I could hopefully prevent any of that from filling. I'm not gonna be reusing this card for now, so I might just leave it as is, sort of as a remembrance of the fluid that was once in there. So at this point, uh, the case itself has been cleaned out pretty well. I removed the power supply enough so I could sort of clean in and under it, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now because all the cables are routed pretty much where they're supposed to be. The plan now is to clear out all this water cooling stuff, uh, reinstall an all-in-one liquid cooler at the top here and then of course the motherboard and everything back in there so I can get the system back up and running and again do those follow-up temperature tests to see what sort of difference we're gonna get. Before that though, I have to figure out the RGB lighting. This motherboard actually was introduced prior to that era, or maybe right on the cusp, but it doesn't have any RGB uh, headers on the motherboard itself. So I'm gonna be sticking with the NZXT Hue. Uh, we actually have the Hue Plus, and I have a replacement for that here. So I'm gonna pop that in. That will allow us to continue using the still functional, albeit discolored uh, NZXT RGB LEDs that are already sort, sort of pre-installed there as well. And that I think will allow my wife to turn back on the candlelight uh, RGB feature that uh, that, that she liked so much before that actually broke. So, moving on. Okay, I uh, made a decent amount of progress yet again. This little build is, uh, you know, it's got some hidden issues that pop up from time to time when it comes to configuring things, but here's how I have it set up. I've got two NZXT 140 millimeter air fans in the top. Those have addressable RGB LEDs that line up with the NZXT system. These have addressable RGB LEDs, so they can plug into the NZXT Hue Plus that's on the back. Uh, I've also got another cable from that Hue Plus coming over so that we can connect up the two RGB LEDs 
strips that are on the side panel. Uh, and this is the bane of my existence is deciding, oh, let's make sure we got the RGB LEDs set up because these NZXT strips are just slightly too long for the side panel. So to get them lined up to the side so I can actually plug it in and route one to the other uh, makes there not enough room on this side to plug those in. So, so these are not gonna be an ideal setup at all. And they're gonna have to kind of angle out here in order to get the plugs plugged in and everything. But at this point, that's not really gonna be a huge concern of mine. I was more concerned about getting the graphics card set up and I decided I wanted a graphics card that was air-cooled since we no longer have an open loop in here to connect a liquid-cooled graphics card to. Uh, I want one that ideally has two 8-pin power connectors because I have these special cables that were made by Ensourced Customs coming over and they're all pre-sleeved and everything. So uh, I wanna just keep, be able to keep using those as is. And then finally, I wanted one that's two slots because one of the downsides to this case is that if you install a full-size power supply in it, which is nice because it fits a full-size power supply, you really only have those two slots for the graphics card there and it's completely blocked there so actually a couple benefits to going with the 5700 xt not the founders edition the reference design uh not the cooler itself because there's definitely better versions of this cooler out there i was thinking two eight pin connectors but it's at least uh, an eight pin and a six pin side by side where i can kind of fudge the extra two pins on the six pin and they can actually sit there and look like that's where they're supposed to be but also the fact that it's got a blower style cooler means that that blower fan is going to be out here suspended over the open area so it will have space to suck in air and the part that is blocked off by the power supply down there at the bottom won't be doing too much damage. Now the downside here is that it's red so it's not going to match with our orange aesthetic but uh, we'll live with that for now and also it means I'm going to need to update the graphics drivers once we get the system back up and running but at least for now I've got a graphics card chosen and I can go ahead and install it. Block over there. Or unless, oh, f no, it won't work. This is actually a very awkward situation because what I'm really trying to do here is figure out a solution to finish this build off, get it back up and running. Cause that was one of the things I needed to do today was get this system clean, get whatever is done with it done. Because like I said, my wife is still using it and she didn't want too much downtime without it. So that said, I'm really just trying to figure out a graphics card that will fit in here in the two slot solution that ideally has dual eight pin connectors because that's what I've got coming from my power supply here. And then ideally something that's at least on par with, if not better than the 980 Ti that I pulled out of here. So, was gonna go with the 5700 XT. However, that's got a six pin and an eight pin power connector. And uh, my eight pins have this fun thing here where the two top pins here uh, that go from six to eight pins are actually connected, which means uh, I can't plug that through the edge of this six pin connector. So I've gotta have an eight pin connector there if I wanna plug this in. Other than that, I mean, I could use an extension or other things like that, but that would look horrible and I don't wanna do that. So we're going to go with the follow-up solution, the 2080 Super. Oh no, the 2080 Super also uses an 8-pin and a 6-pin if you don't go with an aftermarket solution. So my wife is getting my Founders Edition RTX 2080 Ti in here because that's literally the only card I have that meets all those parameters. So um, she's probably not going to be able to use this too long because I will need it back at some point. But there we go. Dual slot card, front fan's gonna be fairly blocked off, but hopefully there's still enough space for it to get some breathing room. Two eight pin connectors on the end, and a lovely green GeForce GTX logo that Nvidia still doesn't let you to change the color on, so it's not gonna match with the orange color scheme at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. All right guys, uh, system's back together and now I hope it works. We have initial success. Just as we did before, I've got uh, the BMW render here going with Blender. I've got uh, Unigine Valley running there as well, putting some stress on the GPU, uh, testing the temperatures with hardware info. I'll get back to you in uh, about eight minutes and let you guys know what the results are. We're back as promised. We've just crossed the 10 minute mark here on our stress test and the BMW render is almost finished. So let's take a look at our temperatures. First off on the CPU, the hottest core we saw was 69 degrees. That's a good uh, eight degrees cooler than the hottest core 
score we saw before, which was 77 degrees. And that is good in that it means we got some improvement on the CPU temperature when it came to swapping that custom loop out for the all-in-one that we are using now, which is the Cooler Master Nepton 240, by the way. The story for the GPU was not quite as good though, but that's because we switched from water cooling to air cooling. It hit 80 degrees Celsius, which is what a lot of 2080 Ti's will hit if you let them run for long enough. Actually, it just hit 81 degrees Celsius, so I take that back, just ticked up one more. And that is significantly hotter than our water-cooled card here. Of course, we are talking about two completely different cards. This is a couple generations old, the 980 Ti versus the much, much newer and more powerful 2080 Ti. But the fact is that when you have a full cover water block like this one from EK, this is gonna do a much better job keeping your GPU cool, even if the coolant has been running for two and a half or three years. So when we started this morning, I wasn't really sure what this video was gonna turn out to be. Uh, it's sort of a unique situation I'm in because I have this full custom water-cooled system that definitely needed some maintenance done on it. I was not gonna leave this coolant in there long term. However, it was also in a weird situation that the coolant had been working for an, a really long period of time. And as you could probably see from those initial numbers, it wasn't necessarily doing a bad job. It was very nice to see with the CPU that swapping that uh, custom loop out and just replacing it with an all-in-one was able to actually improve temperatures. That tells me that yes, this is a project that needed to be done. But of course we saw a pretty drastic 30 degree change in temperature, just looking at what you're gonna get with a water-cooled graphics card versus something like the Founders Edition of the 2080 Ti. Granted, the 2080 Ti's are supposed to run at that temperature, uh, although there are third-party aftermarket coolers that can keep it a bit cooler than that. Um, but I wasn't really expecting any drastic drop in temperature going from a custom water-cooled graphics card to an air-cooled card. I'd say the upshot for today is that my wife has a functional computer, just as she did this morning, so I didn't go and break anything, so that's always nice. She now has the RGB LED lighting working once again, which was something that she did like when the system was first set up. Uh, it failed after, I'd say, eight months or a year, so I think she'll be happy to get that stuff up and running once again. And then we have a system that's just a little bit more easy to go in and do maintenance on in the future if I need to, and I am probably gonna need to steal that 2080 Ti back at some point in the future. But for now, my wife has an even better gaming system, uh, so let me know what you guys think of it. I'll put as many links to relevant parts as I can down in the video's description. And let me know if you think I did an upgrade to my wife's system here, or a downgrade, since I did take out a lot of pretty nice water cooling stuff. Also, should I try to rehabilitate any of that stuff? I'm not sure if I can or if I can clean it out properly. It's definitely a really weird color though for that orange. Not quite the same as it used to be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video though. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time.